I love my Mega 65, but you know, it's not a device that you're just gonna kind of throw into a bag on your way out the front door. A portable Mega 65 called the Megaphone is in the works, and as the name implies though, the form factor is more like a phone and less like a computer. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even have physical keys or a physical keyboard. Now I've shared how to install XEMU, the Mega 65 emulator on both Chrome OS and on my MacBook Pro. And while the emulator is handy on those computers, the lack of a Commodore keyboard makes the experience confusing and awkward. In this video, I'll share my newest solution to travel with a Mega 65 system, and I use that word loosely, and my attempt to include what is somewhat more of a keyboard-like experience in those travels, and it involves this device right here. And before I dig into my portable Mega 65, which is the name I have decided to use, don't forget to do all that business you need to do down below. And also be sure to check out the video description to learn how you can support the channel and join and support the channels using some very fun Commodore inspired levels all the way from the VIC-20 all the way up to the Mega 65. As always, also check out the video description for a companion blog post link and the other links you need for this video. Now my portable Mega 65 solution required a spare laptop. As I've said, I use the Mega 65 emulator XDMU on both a MacBook Pro and a Chromebook. The Chromebook keyboard is the least like a Commodore keyboard, and while the MacBook Pro includes more keys to remap to match the emulator, neither keyboard includes Petsky characters on the keys or includes Commodore-specific keys such as Run, Stop, and Restore. You really need those keys. For my portable Mega 65 solution, I chose to use no. a Windows computer. I don't own a Windows computer and haven't for probably more than 15 years. So I began my search on eBay and was looking for something around the $300 price tag. I mean, they're out there. Trust me, there's all kinds of garbage Windows laptops out there for less than $300 but I wanted this specific model that I was looking for to include a lot of memory and a large SSD so I could do other things on the device if I wanted to. My search led me to a Lenovo ThinkPad T480 with a 14 inch screen and Intel i5-8350U running at 1.7 gigahertz, 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, we live in a wonderful world when you can get all that and that thin form factor for about 300 bucks. That's pretty amazing. Four days after winning the bid, the laptop arrived as advertised. and It was time for me to reacquaint myself with Windows. Yay! Something I was not looking forward to and was not surprised when I turned on the laptop for the first time, I found myself in the Windows setup process complete with update after update after update. But this isn't a Windows bashing video, although it's starting really to sound like one and could be, but no, it's not. Trust me, it's not. So again, I hate to admit it, but Windows is the best operating system to use for my portable Mega 65 development device and for Commodore retro computing at large. As an Apple fan, it pains me to make this admission, but here are the three main reasons I believe this to be true. First of all, as I talked about earlier, better keyboard compatibility. The ThinkPad has all of the keys on the keyboard that I need. It's got some additional ones that aren't included on Chrome OS and on my MacBook Pro. Not surprisingly, there's a lot of software developed on Windows. Let's face it, it's got the, the, the market, right? It owns the market. However, it also owns the retro computing market. And so, especially when it comes to Commodore related software, old Commodore computer emulators or development tools, Windows seems to be key. And while you can kind of get those running under Wine or other emulation packages on a Mac or a Chrome OS, it's not a great experience. I wanted the true Windows experience. I wanted platforms and software that were rock solid. 
and Windows provides that. What tools are those, you might say? Well, two of them, of course, the Vice emulator for all of our Commodore uh, computer emulators. Boy, I wish there was a Mega 65 version of Vice with all those features. That would really be nice. There's also a wonderful tool called the CBM or Commodore Business Machines Program Studio. CBM Program Studio. There's also Directory Master, which allows you to manage your disk images. It's a great tool, fabulous tool, very visual, lets you create items, uh, remove items on the directory of a disk image. Just a fabulous tool to use. And then the last one I found recently and just downloaded was C64 Studio, which supports Basic 10, which is the basic that is included in the Mega 65. So it's another way to develop on your Windows PC and move that software to the Mega 65 or to the XEMU emulator to test. And the last reason, as I mentioned earlier, is that Windows machines are just ubiquitous, they're inexpensive, and they're available to run emulation software efficiently. So I chose the Lenovo ThinkPad, and I did that because I wanted to kind of up my Windows ante a little bit because it included a good HD screen, decent battery life for, for Windows and an Intel processor, lots of onboard memory, and enough storage to hold all of the world's retro computing emulators and software. And I told you those specs earlier. I, I think I've got plenty of power here for retro computing. The Lenovo's ThinkPad profile form factor lets me drop it into my bag next to my MacBook Pro when I travel and use the same USB-C power charging adapter, so it's very convenient. The only thing that it would make it better is if it included a Commodore keyboard. Now, I can't replace the keyboard on the Lenovo, but I can Commodore it up. So how do I make the Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard more Commodore-y? Well, I don't make any physical modifications to the keyboard, but I do add wonderful Commodore 64 black keyboard labels on the top of the majority of keycaps. As you can see, this process is pretty easy. You just simply peel off the label and you put it on the appropriate key, making sure to test to make sure you put the label on the proper key, because again, the keys are different on a Commodore computer than they are on a Windows computer. Now, some of these labels, I did have to make a modification. They were just too big, and the Lenovo laptop had these half-height keys. So I just took an X-Acto knife, trimmed those up, and made those fit. In the end, I love the look of the keyboard uh, with the black and white keys matching the black and white keys on the ThinkPad. But more importantly, the labels remind me which number keys are which colors now and which keys produce ASCII characters. Very handy when you're programming in BASIC, which is primarily the programming language I'm using. I've even labeled non-standard keys, run, stop, and restore to match the emulator. It's great. It's a great solution that makes using the XMU emulator and other Commodore emulators such as Vice more productive, fun, and enjoyable. So let's talk about the XEMU emulator. But you might wonder if using emulation software diminishes the Mega 65 experience. As mentioned, I miss the wonderful Mega 65 keyboard because it's the best keyboard found on any Commodore computer. Just listen to those Cherry MX switches. Isn't that great? So the ThinkPad can't reproduce those mechanical switches. The Lenovo keyboard just isn't as good, but better than keyboards found on the original VIC-20 and C64. XEMU provides other advantages over hardware that include the following. We can get screen captures right away. They're just a right click away, and I can share those screen captures with the community, or if I have technical issues, share them with the developers. I also like that XEMU has a configurable keyboard.config file so that I can make changes to the Windows PC layout if I wanna move some of those Commodore specific keys around on the keyboard. I did make a few tiny adjustments for my ThinkPad. I think it was only two keys, so it's not much, but it was just enough to give it that extra oomph of, of familiarity. 
I love that XEMU will go full screen mode on the laptop. So I feel like I've got this wonderful blue glow from the Mega 65 and it provides a distraction free environment when I go full screen. And finally, running software like Directory Master in tandem with XEMU provides a slick round trip solution to prepare disk images for final use on the Mega 65. So those are the five benefits I've selected. I'm sure there are others, and I would love to hear what benefits you see in running XEMU. Be sure and post those in the comments down below. So when I am using XEMU to create basic programs, one of the things I want to do is ensure that that disk image is syncing across multiple computers. That way, if I'm working on my portable Mega 65 system, whether I'm on my MacBook, whether I'm on my Chrome OS device running XEMU, and then finally coming back to the Mega 65, the physical, how can I do that in a way that's efficient and that I know that I'm always working on the same version at all times? Well, I use Google Drive to sync files across computers, but really for this, any cloud tool like Dropbox or Windows OneDrive will work. I use a folder named Mega65 to sync the disk image. The folder syncs to a Mac Mini that's synced to my Mega65 using a DSD USB to TTL adapter. I've covered that in another video. You can check out that video link in the video description below. I then use M65 Connect available on Windows, Linux, or Mac to move the disk image from the cloud folder to the Mega 65. Do I wish I could cloud sync the file directly to the Mega 65? Sure, who wouldn't? But that solution as of yet doesn't exist. If I make modifications on the Mega 65, I must remember to copy the disk physically, go through that process, that image back to the Mac and the cloud folder. But at least when I'm working on modern computers, I know I'm always working with the latest disk image that contains the basic programs I'm working on. Now, while I love my new portable Mega 65 laptop, it is not without some frustrations. I'd forgotten how quickly Intel processors drain batteries in both use and just sitting around in sleep mode. On my M1 MacBook Pro with XEMU, I can program all day long, even a day and a half without a charge. The Lenovo is done in about four hours. Now, I did buy this laptop used. There could be some battery fatigue, but I just don't think it's that much. I, this thing seemed really lightly used. And let's go back to Windows. I said this wasn't a Windows bashing video, but I think I lied because Windows, while an improvement from the last version I used, which I think was seven, is a hot mess, folks. Holding on to those legacy user interface components makes managing the system a visual and user disaster. I say this coming from Linux and Mac, where I can simply pop open a terminal, type a few commands, and update everything at once. I remember now why I moved to Linux and Mac OS. Finally, updating the OS and software is the same pain I remember it being. Is there a common way just do you have to go through four or five different ways to upgrade Windows software? Somebody, please help me. I know there's Windows users out there who could say to me, Retrocombs, here's how you want to manage and update software on your Windows machine. I want to know that too. So put that down in the, in the comments below. So as I think about my portable Mega 65 solution, what do I think is missing? Well, I think there are, right now are only two things. You may have others after this list, so you know what to do. Put those in the comments. But first of all, I need a sticker on the lid and I didn't have time to download one print one or put one but there should be one right here that is the mega 65 logo also want to find a USB joystick controller that I can throw into a bag this ain't it folks this is a little too bulky a, uh, a nice joy pad would be good so I'll be looking for one of those if I could take that throw that in the travel bag that way I have a good portable joystick for my portable mega 65 Okay, time to sum up my Mega 65 laptop experiment. So I've used it for a couple of weeks now and I really enjoy creating basic programs and experimenting with the Mega 65 emulator on the Lenovo ThinkPad laptop. It's a good solution and until somebody recreates the Mega 65 in a Commodore LCD form factor, I'll use the Mega 65 portable. 
Hey, if you'd like more information on that DSD USB to TTL adapter, check out this video. And if you want to learn more about your Mega 65 keyboard, check out this video. That concludes my video on the Mega 65 portable laptop. Retrocombs out.